Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin, SEO, walking through Inwood, Inwood Hill Park on Thursday, October 23rd. Um, it's probably like my third video today total. Uh, there's something flying loud overhead. It's my third video today total, starting out with a, a rainy morning video. Most of that rain is gone. But uh, it's still kind of icky out. And uh, the second video was made using Screencast-O-Matic, which I bought a license for. I paid my $15 for a year. And uh, I'm working on a larger screen uh, PC at the office, a Windows machine where normally, left to my own uh, designs, I would be working on a Mac desktop because its built-in terminal is Unix. And it's a much more familiar environment. And I like controlling things through type-in user interface. And the whole set of type-in commands that you get when you go onto a Windows machine are A, much less powerful, and B, different from any other computer you would ever sit down on. Now on a Mac, when you open its terminal, it's Unix. It's a more industry standards compliant version of Unix than most Linux distributions, in fact. Because being Unix compatible according to the POSIX standard has this whole list of stuff. And most Linux distributions, for pragmatic reasons, don't include all the stuff to make it POSIX compliant. One of those things includes a remote package manager, an RPM, aka, AKA the Red Hat package manager, which was elected as the manager to be part of the Unix standard. And many popular versions of Unix for reasons of their own, namely Debian and Arch Linux, two different versions. Ubuntu is based on Debian, and Arch Linux is sort of a character unto itself, uh, because they determined that for their target users of their distribution, POSIX compliance was not necessary. In fact, it might even be a liability if they're replacing the remote package manager with one that they believe works better because they track every interaction and it's in a giant table of what you know gets installed with what and what depends on what so every time you build up a system on Debian in particular you're not gonna have any version incompatibility strangeness the installer just works it all out the remote package manager just works it all out. The uh, one that's part of the POSIX standard isn't necessarily that way. It uses any repository and it has a package. Now they're all getting better in declaring their dependency chain and then getting copies of that onto your machine without having to go through the whole compilation from source process, which is what in the olden days made uh, Linux machine so difficult it was installing software and working out sometimes circular dependency chains now with the remote package managers having eliminated that obstacle um, Linux suddenly becomes mainstream popular to the tune of uh, Ubuntu uh, using uh, Debian uh, and uh, Android using the Linux boot kernel, not the whole uh, set of commands that are collectively known as GNU. But you don't need all the GNU for many, ver many uh, things that you would need a, a server for, for example. So all you really need is enough of this Unix slash Linux command set to CD around in your directories, to uh, run familiar programs like SSH and Vim. So basically, all the software recompiles for any platform running a 
Unix or Unix-like, i.e. Linux, operating system. Except for Windows. Windows is the big exception. It has considerably less, but happily, uh, using the same concepts as what makes uh, different versions of Linux valuable, once a machine is booted, you can do whatever you want, distro-wise. There are a number of ways to turn a Windows machine into very much a POSIX compliance Unix machine, namely SIGWIN. Uh, SIGWIN was serious uh, software at one point, and they uh, developed this whole way to get their software running on Windows machines without having to rewrite it for Windows, but instead they rewrote it for the SIGWIN platform, which was an installation of a bunch of stuff, mainly one big DLL that is uh, SIGWIN, the SIGWIN D DLL, and now all this Unix software can compile and run on Windows. Brilliant! Except that SIGWIN is heavyweight, so someone out there caught, made MinGW, which is the minimum amount of stuff to make your Windows machine work and run like a Unix machine. And that's what I've used at the office to get my current round of work um, running on a Windows PC with no dependencies coming from the fact that it's Windows underneath. My code is totally portable between any platform, so long as that platform is Python, some Linux commands, Vim, and Git. Linux, Python, Vim, and Git. That's this handful of stuff that you learn so that your knowledge is obsolescence proof. That you have a set of stuff that you can carry around with you anywhere because you know how to use the type-in user interface. See, that's key. Familiarity plummets when you switch between platforms so long as those platforms are graphical based like iOS, Android, Windows, etc. Unless they're Unix or Linux based and you tear that one layer away and you are utterly familiar with what lies underneath and you can program for it. You can take control of almost any modern machine that has a standard operating system as its controller unit. So anyway, I stopped talking there. I guess that was a pretty long ramble. Coming on eight minutes. Thanks for joining me. I uh, hope to see you soon and don't forget to subscribe.